I just realized I have some, probably something for my kids on my sweater. Can you see it? <laughs> right, Jennifer, can I take you all the way back to when you first started curling? When were you introduced to the sport? How did all that come about? I basically grew up at the curling club. My parents were very actively involved in our curling club, and my daycare was at the curling club, and I would always sneak out of the daycare and go and watch people curling on the ice, and I was just always itching to play. So my parents got me involved at a at a young age, not in a league, but I was just always surrounded by curling. Did you find you were quite good at it early on? I understood the game from a very early age, which a lot of the people that I was playing with didn't. A lot of the kids didn't understand the game, and I did. I was a really, really shy kid, uh, painfully shy, actually. So my parents, it was one of the reasons why I got involved in sport was to try to make it easier for me to make friends and be a part of a team. And curling has really changed my life in so many ways. I never would be the person I am today without it. Were you good at other sports? I played, yeah, I played baseball and volleyball and really any sport that you could possibly imagine I played. I, I just loved being involved in a team atmosphere. It helped me as being a shy kid really fitting in and feeling a part of something. And so that's why it's really important for me, my kids, to be active in sports as well. And I guess at some point you would have to make the decision about whether to, to go more curling and less other sports? I did have to make a decision. It was volleyball and curling and uh, there was just too many conflicts. and. When I decided to, to play curling, it was really because it was when I, I felt so at peace when I was on the ice. I loved the feeling, the smell of the ice. Being out there, I felt like I was at home and comfortable and I could truly be myself and it brought me a joy and a love that nothing else did. How does the ice smell? Like nothing else. It just, I feel, it gives me a sense of calm and peace. It almost feels like I'm going to a spa, like that feeling of utter relaxation and just being totally and utterly at home. And it's a, it's a feeling I don't get very many times in life. And I get it when I'm at home with my kids and Brent. And other than that, it's, it really is one of the best places in the world for me. What do they think about what mommy does? Um, it's interesting because my daughter is actually with um, a friend. And she's, she was watching her while we're at the Worlds. And I got a text last night. And I guess Isabella told, uh, told my friend that She's very lucky that both her mom and her dad are Olympians, that she is a one lucky little girl. And she thinks that my curling and Brent's curling is so fun and that we get to be on the ice and that every mummy and daddy are on TV commercials and on big billboards. And she wonders why her friend's parents aren't doing that. But she also, I think, is getting old enough to realize that you have to work hard and we talk about it all the time and to believe in yourselves and work hard and never let anybody tell you you can't do something. And the other day she was at her gymnastics and she finally was able to do something and she was just beaming with pride. And I was so proud of her because she worked so hard to be able to do it. And she said, you know, mom, you taught me that if I can work hard, I can do anything. And I believe that that's what the chaotic life that we have sometimes has taught our kids and taught our daughters is that anything is possible and they can chase their dreams and if they work hard they're going to enjoy life and that that just that's all I want for my kids. So how does a shy child become a skip? You know, I think actually it's a perfect position for somebody who's who's maybe a little introverted like I was because you, you're part of a team but you also get to be by yourself and get that quiet time when you need it the other end and I, I understood the game very early on which is why I started skipping. I skipped almost from the very beginning and it's always been basically my position. I played third just a couple of years. Do you ever have disagreements with the girls? Have there been moments over the years? To be honest, our team dynamics are one of our biggest strengths. We get along so very well. And I know that if I was to ever miss a shot to win, they would be the first people there to pick me up. And that says so much about my teammates. And obviously there's um, been times over the years where maybe things don't go as smoothly, but over the, over the last eight years with these girls, I can honestly say we've not had one disagreement. We've only been each other's cheerleaders, each other's biggest fans, and each other's biggest supporters. Do you think you'd be still curling if you hadn't had the success that you've had? I do believe I would just because of the feeling that curling gives me and the love of the game and it's just been a part of my family. My dad grew up curling and my mom started curling and it was really something that our family did together and it brings back so many great childhood memories that I think it will always be a part of our lives. Are you able to single out anything? There's been so much success for you. One highlight, one major moment? 
I don't think you can pick one major moment, to be honest. Uh, we had, we've had so many which we're, we're so lucky for. To be honest, I think the moment that changed me and who, what helped me become the player that I am today was losing the Canadian Junior Final back in the 90s. Um, it was, uh, I played third and I played with an amazing skip. Um, and unfortunately, we, we, we didn't win that championship and I was devastated. And I thought after that and how, how devastated I was that I could never let that happen again. I had to have perspective and it wasn't all about winning and losing. It was really about the journey and about enjoying the moment. And from then on, I've enjoyed every moment. And I think that that's led to a lot of our success, like to 2005 and the in-off when everything seemed that it was impossible in our first world championship. Uh, and then you go to Vernon where we won our first world championship in Canada and the crowd and then coming to North Bay and this crowd has been unbelievable. And then obviously the Olympics where it seemed like every day we were so thankful to slide over those Olympic rings and we enjoyed every second of those Olympic games, every shot, every moment, everything. And stepping on the podium was just the pinnacle of it all, but it was just all the little moments that didn't pass us by. And I think it all goes back to remembering to enjoy the moment. The Olympic run was just fantastic, wasn't it? I'll never forget our run at the Olympics. And we went in with just this attitude of sheer enjoyment and and all of a sudden at the end of the week we hadn't lost a game and to be honest I don't even think we realized it and I didn't realize it until they told me in the media scrum that we'd set this Olympic record and it was just like we were in the moment and going through and then we'd won all our games and all, we set this Olympic record and I remember very vividly going into the change room and telling the girls that we set an Olympic record that that little OR was going to be flashing next to our names on the screen that when you, we watch the Olympics and we see people set an Olympic record that was us and I, we all kind of had a little, a little tear in our eye because we were going to be in the record books for the Olympic Games and it was a record that can only be tied and never broken so we were going to be forever remembered uh, as part of the Olympic history and in that moment it was just, that was one of the most special moments of our sporting career at to be, to set an Olympic record in our first Olympic Games and doing it in a way that we didn't even realize what we had accomplished until it happened. But you're also forever remembered as the 2014 Olympic champions. That will never change either. That's in the books. That is in the books. But before we had won that, we knew that we were in the books already. So I think, I, I think it was that moment where we realized that we were in the Olympic record book. And then all of a sudden we went and won the, the Olympic gold medal and taking that step on the podium and seeing your flag being raised. I wish everybody in the world could experience it. And I do feel that as a Canadian, I feel that probably all athletes feel it. When you take that step up, you're doing it for your country. And what an incredible honor that is. Can you remember the feeling, hear, hearing the anthem? Can you remember what that felt like? Oh yeah, I closed my eyes and because I wanted to soak it up. And, and if I close my eyes now, I can put myself back in that moment and taking that step up and looking at our families crying, but seeing that flag being raised with the Olympic torch in the background, the smell of the air and everything about it, it was, it's what dreams were made of and then some. It was like the most incredible kind of time-stopping moment that I've ever had and I can definitely put myself back in that moment. And how much has curling helped you in your non-curling life, do you think? Curling has given me so much. It's given me the confidence to believe that I can do anything. It's uh, showed me that, I, that anything is possible. Nobody believed that I could be a lawyer and a, and a curler at the same time, and, but I believed that I could do, I could do anything. And so I, I set off on that journey and I was able to do it. And I, I think the biggest impact it has is on how I raise my kids. I want my daughters to believe that anything is possible and that dreams do come true and to never let anyone tell them that they can't do something. And when my little girl told me that she was gonna be an Olympian one day when we arrived in Korea, in that moment I just thought, even though our life is chaotic, that we've inspired our kids to chase their dreams. And as a mom, that's all you want for your kids. And there's still stuff that you want in curling, though. You've still got some, some ambitions there. You've done a lot, but there's still more to come. I hope there's more to come. I believe that we're still getting better. And I always said I'd keep playing as long as I felt like we were getting better. And I still feel like we are. And we just, our work ethic is never, it's never changed. And so we're going to try to chase the Olympic dream for four more years. And we were disappointed to not be in Pyeongchang. And, and then when I went to watch Brent playing and I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, we still have more to give. We can do this. We can work hard and, and try to see if we can get back to the Olympics and represent Canada one more time and see what we can do. How do you train more? How do you get better? How do you put more in than you do already? 
I don't know if you can put more in, but you can do things differently. Um, and we're always trying to think outside the box and try to figure out how we can be better, how we can maybe get an edge on our competition. And we all, we're always willing to try new things. And again, in, that's my philosophy on life, is that you have to be willing to change and evolve in order to live life to the fullest. And we've got the same attitude towards curling, that we're always willing to try anything new. Some things work, some things don't, but a lot of it has led to our success. But what kind of things could you change? Even small things? We can't share our secrets, but you can definitely change. You know, you can definitely change little things, whether it's from a sweeping technique or how you throw the rock or maybe some strategy um, ideas as you approach a game. There's always things that can be different. Curling is a game and the game hasn't really changed per se, but how people approach the game has. And so you have to always try to stay one step ahead of the competition. What's also changed is that um, influence from the Asian countries who've really kind of upped their game and, and they're right up there on the world stage. That's another dimension to the sport as well. Absolutely. Bing Yu Wang, when she came onto the scene, I remember she was at our first world championship and then five years later, I think they won the world championship. So that was an amazing just growth in their game over such a short period of time and seeing Asia come on board and how great they are and the, the depth of talent in women's world curling has been there for a decade and it's just getting better, which is scary for us Canadians in certain ways, but amazing for the sport. And I always say you want to be able to beat the best in order to be the best. And so the, the fact that the depth of talent around the world is getting better is just, it's just great for curling. And has Canada felt a kind of, you know, after Pyeongchang, was it kind of stop and a check and thinking, right, you know, we need to up our game now too. We can't rest on our laurels. I feel like after the last Olympics, we definitely are going to, as a, as a country, look at things. But I feel like it's been like that for uh, 10 years. We've been saying for a long time how the world has caught up, that the World Championship is so hard to win, and that these teams are, are so talented from around the world. So it's been there, but obviously um, with Pyeongchang, it's, it's kind of on the forefront of Canadians' minds. And so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll find ways to, to see what we can do differently and, and try to be better. Fast forward to the future, looking back at your career, what will, you, what, what will be your main, main thought? Not necessarily about winning things, but what will be your main, your main kind of, not highlight, but just that when you look back all over those years? I believe that when, we, when we're sitting in our armchairs watching curling on TV, we're going to really sit back and be proud of our longevity. Like how long we were able to stay at the top of the game and, and the world championships that we were able to compete in and the Olympic Games that we won. And, and all of the memories, but just really how I believe that we've always had great perspective and really remember to enjoy the moment and the privilege of being able to represent Canada and the privilege of being able to compete in these world championships with these fans cheering and being on the ice, being televised on TV and really being superstars for a moment in time. And not a lot of people get to do that. And we've always felt it was a huge honor and something that we're going to be forever thankful for.